Welcome to um, the third in our series of um, short talks about women in the Old Testament. Um, two weeks ago, uh, we looked at Hannah, um, and we looked at Hannah as the story of a prayer. Last week, a bit of a tougher one, really, um, looking at Deborah, um, who was one of the judges uh, raised up by God to help his people in a crisis, uh, which seemed to be where they were quite often. Today, I want to have a look at Esther. I don't know what we uh, know about Esther, um, but the story of Esther is set in Babylon during the reign of King Xerxes, who we know reigned sometime between about 486 to 465 BC. So it's about a hundred years after Judah was defeated by the Babylonians and some of its people taken into exile. So it's set in quite difficult and uncertain times, um, times of change and times of danger for God's people. And Esther is a young Jewish girl living in Babylon under the protection of her uncle Mordecai. She's taken into the king's harem, but she finds favour with the king, who then makes her his queen. And shortly, uh, the Bible reading that we're going to hear um, is a conversation between Esther and her uncle Mordecai. But first of all, let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you that as we come to worship, you are here, waiting to greet us, speak with us and teach us. You are here as you always are here. You are here as you are everywhere, at every moment, in every place, on every occasion, watching over us. Day by day, you have been by our sides, recognised or unrecognised, remembered or forgotten, obeyed or disobeyed, acknowledged or taken for granted. Though our response to you has been varied, our commitment uncertain and our attitudes mixed. You have always been the same, ever faithful or loving, always true. Forgive us for the way we have responded, failing to appreciate how much we owe to you and taking your love as ours by right. Forgive us for so often forgetting you, disobeying your commandments, abandoning our faith. Help us to love you as much as you love us, to be as true to you as you are always true and to rejoice in your living presence, not only now, but in every moment of our lives. Meet with us now, go with us always. Amen. going to um, take our Bible passage from the fourth chapter of Esther um, and reading verses 10 to 17. And as I mentioned earlier, it's a conversation between Uncle Mordecai and his niece Esther. Remember that Esther is now a queen. And this is how the conversation 
those. Also worth noticing uh, that um, God's people are in a very difficult and dangerous situation because there's a plot to kill all of God's people, the Jews. And Mordecai asks Esther to intervene with the king on behalf of their people. And this is the conversation that they have. And the first person we hear speaking is Esther. Esther instructed the official to say to Mordecai, all the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that they be put to death unless the king extends the gold scepter to them and spares their lives. But thirty days have passed since I was called to go to the king. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all Esther's instructions. Thanks be to God for his word. And if you continue to read God's word in chapters 5 and 7 of Esther, you will discover that she does indeed risk her life, goes to the king, and the king does grant her wish to save her people. And then she's able to work with her uncle Mordecai to reverse the laws against the Jewish people. She takes responsibility and she does what she can. She uses the position she finds herself in to do what she can. I love the book of Esther and I love the story of Esther. Because I think Esther, finding herself in such a difficult position, could easily have said, why me? But she doesn't, does she? She asks a completely different question. She asks herself, what can I do? Not why, but what can I do? And for Esther, that meant taking a huge risk to save her people. I don't think we're going to find ourselves in um, such a situation as Esther. But we do find ourselves in situations, don't we, that are difficult. That's just part of our human experience. I think the story of Esther encourages us to think about what we can do to help ourselves or others. Just as Esther asks herself the question, what can I do? Maybe that's a question we need to be asking ourselves a little bit more. What can we do? to keep faith with God. Not always easy, 
because I'm not going to pretend that we don't find ourselves in some very difficult situations for ourselves, our family and our friends. But I wonder if it makes just a little bit of difference to be Esther and to ask ourselves, what can I do in this situation? And it could be the smallest thing that can make a big difference. We've recently been using some of our churches as warm spaces, opening them up, offering food and hospitality. That's a kind of what can I do sort of thing, isn't it? That's kind of enabled some people, and we just don't know how many, um, to get through a difficult winter with very high fuel prices. Maybe we need to be more Esther. Ask the question, not why me, but what can I do? And then see if maybe God has placed us here, you and me, for such a time as this. Because that's what Mordecai says to Esther. You have been placed in this position by God for such a time as this. Six words for such a time as this, but incredibly profound and incredibly challenging. Esther asks herself, not why, but what can I do? Taking on board Mordecai's words, that she has been placed there for such a time as this. For Esther, that was a really tough thing to do because she was actually risking her life by going into the presence of the king without being asked. But never forget that when we ask that question, what can I do that will never, ever act alone? Because in the book of Esther, what Esther is able to do is balanced by what God is able to do. For God is in Esther's situation. Just as he is in any situation we might find ourselves, Esther is not alone. And neither are we. Sometime this week, pick up the book of Esther and have a read. In the book of Esther, God works through a human being, a really unlikely one, a young girl. God works through human activity when we accept the responsibility to use the position we find ourselves in when we realise that maybe we are just where we are for such a time as this. The writer John Goldingay, when he reflects on the book of Esther, says that things often work out without us being able to see the hand of God. But he's there, working behind the scenes for the God, for the good of those who love him. And in the book of Esther, God is quietly at work. Esther does what she can in the situation she finds herself in. A situation where God is already at work. In the book of Esther, it's human action. Mordecai and Esther, and God's providence, which brings salvation and rescue to God's people. Maybe we need to be a little bit more Esther and remember that we don't work alone, that God works with us, and also other people do, 
um, Esther had her incredibly brave uncle Mordecai um, to work with her. And it's just a lovely bit in the early part of the book of Esther, when Esther is first taken into the palace of the king, when Mordecai walks past every day just to make sure that she is OK. Can't get in, but he just goes past to make sure that she is OK. We all have to make difficult decisions about how to react to situations that we find ourselves in. Not just as individuals, but as churches in an increasingly secular society. Sometimes we might wish that God's presence and power were a bit more obvious. But I think we should take heart from the book of Esther and remember that God is at work through us and with us. And when we face difficulties, God is there with us. And just maybe, perhaps, like Esther, we are where we are because we have been raised up by God for such a time as this. And I think when we face that question, the next question is, not me, not why. Sorry, <laughs> not why, but what can I do? So the second question is, not why, but what can I do? Amen. Let's pray. There is more to be done, and we are those who are called. There is more to be said, and we are those who are called. There is more to be changed, and we are those who are called. Amen. Thanks be to God.